I'm a big fan of the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I live by it wherever I am. But there is one more, repair. And it's ideal for most things, particularly old garden tools such as this. So I'm actually on my way to a place called the Repair Cafe. They're going to give me plenty of advice on how to do it. The Repair Cafe is part of the Bower Reuse and Repair Centre Co-op in the inner city Sydney suburb of Redfern. The workshop manager is Luke Mitchell. Yeah, so remember the angle? The Repair Cafe is an opportunity for the public to come into a space with items that are broken and under the guidance of, of people who have more experience, learn how to fix those, those items. So it's not a free service where we repair something, but it's an opportunity for people in the community to learn how to fix things for themselves. Why do you think it's important to develop these projects and keep waste out of landfill? We don't need to buy new things. We throw away enough good stuff to buy secondhand things or repair things that just need a little bit of work. And it's rewarding to do it. I'd prefer to use a shovel that you know, that I've, I've, I've worked to fix up and I can look after. It's, it it's almost gives it magic, you know. So what do you got for us, Costa? I've been rummaging around in the garage and I've come across a few different things that you'll be happy to know are actually heirlooms. These tools are actually my grandfather's. They're all good tools. I reckon we focus on the saw and we'll get that tuned up for you today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to remove uh, the handle from the saw. And that's pretty simple. It's just some flathead um, screws. And I'll get you to unscrew them. We can take that off. It's special. Yeah, it it'll be special when it's all cleaned up and it's working again and it looks glorious. How about chuck it in there? Um... Beautiful. All right, so now we need to clean that up. So we're just going to use a bit of steel wool and vinegar. Yep. Pretty funny, I never thought I'd be teaching Costa to, to tune up a saw. <laughs> All right, now we need to put a bit of oil on this. We can do a light sand if we want to, but it's not 100% necessary. It's no. got, there's some lovely little carvings and stuff mm. in here. Um, we don't want to lose that. So we could just put oil on it to preserve it. Like, just lather oh, it okay. on. You're, you're serious Yeah, about yeah, this. yeah, let it soak, because we want that to soak into the timber. Yeah. Penetrate as deep as we can. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we can leave that. And while we're letting that sit, we can sharpen this. First, we need to clamp the saw into something. We're going to use two bits of timber, and we're actually going to clamp them around the saw. So what we need to do, I'm going to get the fits nicely between those teeth until we've sharpened up that side oh, of the tooth. Oh, look at it. Yeah, I can see that. that yeah, that's... beautiful chrome. Oh, it's shiny. Some of the volunteers have also come along to the repair cafe to fix a few of their own garden tools. So, Costa, Meryl's brought in this uh, this shovel, the head's come off it. It was a bit rusty, it was a bit dry, um, much like the saw that we were fixing up. Yeah. And Meryl's just sanding back the handle and we can put a bit of linseed oil on that. Meryl, how did you learn about the repair cafe? Well, I'm still learning. I learnt from Luke. He's had a great influence on me in terms of thinking about sustainability and, and reducing my footprint on this earth. Dave, what are you up to here? I've just brought in this old piece of gardening equipment and I'm just trying to clean it, get all the rust off it, sharpen the blade and put a new spring in so the handles come apart. Are you winning? Yes, it's not that hard. All of it pulls apart quite easily. The rust comes off with some vinegar and steel wool. And then after I've put it all back together, I'll give it some vegetable oil, be as good as new. So Paul, what are you up to? Uh, Costa, I've brought in these shears. They were very blunt, no edge on them whatsoever. And also, the handle had broken off, as you can see, it's completely snapped ah, in half. Yeah. But what Luke has done is he's taken this bigger piece of timber and he's cut it in half, and then he's taken this piece here and turned it and perfectly replaced that That's handle. fantastic. And you think about it, like, this steel is going to last forever. Exactly. And, OK, that breaks a piece of timber and yeah. it's back in business. Garden tools can do it tough, but with some know-how and a bit of effort, they can become almost as good as new. Just putting on the last screw. It's had a good drink of linseed oil. 
It's really soaked it up. I don't think it's seen any moisture since this piece of wood came off the tree, but it's looking a lot better now, isn't it? That handle looks brand new. And how do you feel oh. when, you, when you see it like this? Pretty pleased. You see, it's got another few years in it yet. The only thing really wrong with it was uh, the spring was gone, so put a new spring you can get from a hardware store, and it's as good as new. Look at that. So these are good for another oh. 10 years, I reckon. The sound on those mm. and the feel, the balance is there. Well, come on, give them the test. Oh! <laughs> these are sharp. I could no, almost no. be tempted. No, no way. No way. Great. Done. Looks incredible. And then it's all sharpened and set and ready to go. I'm really stoked to see that all the tools we've looked at today have been given a new lease on life. And like Meryl and Dave and Paul, I'm sure that somewhere around your place, there's a few tools like these that could do with some TLC. So give it a go. You can do it.